hey, I hope you like that video I just put together. Um, decided I felt like doing a little bit of jamming, and so what I did, because I had, in my last video, done um, this, uh, this concept here of putting uh, colored dots on in the key of A uh, to, to help uh, di diagram out the, uh, the blues scale, I figured that uh, dig up an old backtrack and, and actually do some jamming in the key of A uh, just to kind of give you an idea of, of how you know, I approach this and, and, and show you some of the licks in here. So what I want to do now is uh, maybe just run through a little bit of the stuff. I can't really go note for note, but um, you know, we'll take a look and, and I'll give you a few ideas of, of what I've done on some of these jams. So now you don't want to see my ugly mug, we'll just put you on the video here. And uh, yeah, we kind of start off. So all right, so basically where I started here is uh, on the fifth string. <laughs> It's, it's kind of you know showing how in this, this first position here on um, right underneath the, the root note on the fifth string and then uh, so there's two ways to do it you can come up here uh, above it slide up or just do the little bend so that's just a couple ways that I would play that little little lick um, All right, so then I'm moving up here into this box, which um, you know the the base of it here is this root uh, this root A note on the second string, and uh, you know you're basically playing with your, your your two fingers here with the the middle finger on that third string. I'm just kind of playing around in there. Um, Uh, then I, you know, kind of slide back down into this uh, this area. So you know, you'll notice a lot of my playing. I'm, you know, I'm going to focus up here on this little box and then slide down into here. So this this on this third string here, um, you come up here from the ninth fret down to the seventh. That's a good way to make the transition in between those two uh, those two positions. So. Again, you're moving in between those two positions, but you're doing it economically by sliding with that middle finger. And um, I'll rewind this a little bit because I did this little bend. So. And again, I mean, what we're doing here is kind of an arpeggiated uh, approach. Um, you know, you start up here with the with the bend, and you know, normally I'm going to do that with my third finger. And uh, I get a little conservative when I got these cameras on here because it shakes. But um, you know, the whole key with this with this bend is you got to hit the bend. So it it, it blends and melts into this this note because what you're doing is you're coming from this note up into here with that bend and um, you know I, I plan on doing another video on, on bend specifically because I think it's an important part of of, uh, of playing the blues and, uh, and and you know you know you know hitting those notes so you know what I'm doing here um, I'm actually using this point on my finger as a, as, a, as, a, as my hand as a fulcrum um, I'm not bending a whole lot with my fingers um, but I'm I'm more pivoting against this and, and creating some leverage. And uh, that helps you, you know, control the bends a lot more. Um, so you notice in this video I do a lot of slow bends up uh, to, you know, to hit a note and build some tension. So So again it's just that 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 slow bend into it instead of a you just slow it down. So, uh, 
I, and you'll hear this little note, this little uh, lick a lot. And what that is is, um, you know, I'm coming up here on uh, the third string uh, on the fifth fret, giving a little vibrato, and then doing a quick pull off um, from from the A, uh, you know, note here on the on the the fourth string. <laughs> And um, you know that that is pure muscle memory. That you know things that uh, um, you know it, it's just a nice little tagline, um, and you just make sure you snap it. And again, that vibrato. And the vibrato really comes a lot from uh, from where the bend uh, comes. It's that same fulcrum point, um, except you're you're holding it down. And um, you know I've seen some people play. You know that side to side, but for me, it's really this. You know, just a, a wobble, and you know, it's more I'm pulling down on it, but using this, uh, this, this, that, that point right here on my finger is is a fulcrum. And uh, you know, hitting those uh, those pull offs is snapping them. Um, Kind of see what this next uh, next thing I came up with was. All right, so uh, uh, what I'm doing here is a double stop um, on the uh, the second and, and third strings right here on these two um, yellow dots. So and again, it's just um, you know on the second and third. And then this is where this blue note comes in. A nice hammer on and pull off on um, it's a it's a good little embellishment. So a lot of times I'll I'll you know you know hit that A note in between the, the, the double stops there. And uh, that's what I did in that uh, that little lick right there. All right, so again, that you know, slow bend, and uh, you see also what I did on there is, is rather than that, that straight minor pentatonic, I threw in those uh, those those major notes. So um, again, it gives it a little blues color, and, and what that is, if you're you're looking at the, the colors on the dots, the yellow ones are the, the minor pentatonic, and the blue is from the major pentatonic. So again, I'm blending that major and minor. And uh, just kind of that uh, sweet potato slim tone there. All right, so again, and that's just you know uh, sticking around here on that fifth and fourth string, but the uh, you know centered around that uh, that root note here on the fourth, and then I, I slid down here, um, you know, to where I'm in, in this position. And uh, you know that's the efficient way that I'm, I'm sliding in between these positions. So here, slide here, slide here. Um, you see that uh, kind of over and over in my playing. All right, and so um, you know again I came back up to this double stop, but what I did is I threw in the. So um, again I just took the, these two notes. And, uh, um, so again, those those double stops. Um, it's just a, a cool way to add that in there. Um, seem to do that a lot. All right, so I'm I'm back up here, and um, you know this is a nice little arpeggiation here. I, I start, um, you know, again in this position, middle finger on the third uh, string here on the ninth fret. Uh, my my ring finger on the uh, the root note, um, and uh, with my right hand, um, this is one of the benefits of being able to play with the right hand is because you can just individually pluck it instead of instead of uh, you know with the pick when you're strumming it. Um, so I just come up here and then uh, hitting this little slide uh, combination where um, my ring finger here is on the tenth fret on the first string, and I'm sliding up and down. Um, and just hitting that um, again, remembering that that vibrato and uh, hitting 
those little pull off type licks. Um, you know, those are the types of things. And, and this one, I'm I'm on the second string root note, and just uh, just just coming down. And you know what? It's a lot better than just playing. You know, one note. It it adds just some extra color there. All right, and so here that's a, that's another common thing is this uh, this double stop. So you know we we did the double stop on the second and third strings here. Well, what I'm doing is here is up is basically up in this position, um, third string ninth fret, second string eighth fret. And just kind of sliding back down uh, one fret and moving it up. And just you know playing around with that. If you you want to add another note to that, you can actually come up here. You know where you're uh, you're making this little triangle. But uh, yeah, for this one I just. Um, and then you know I yeah, like I did that uh, you know uh, slide and hammer on. Right there, I do it uh, basically an octave down here on uh, on the third string. So you can or and again, that's just you know just practicing it, and, and you, know, you can certainly do the bend, but uh, you know you get a little more definition, and it gives it a nice tone when you do this slide. That's just playing around with the bends here. So again, you know, the, the whole thing with the bends is, um, you know, you can snap it with the, with, you know, what I'm doing here with my two fingers, or you can uh, you know, just kind of ease into it. But it's all about hitting that note. Uh, See, um, you know, you really want to focus on, you know, if you're going to hit a bend, hit it. You know, don't, don't half, half, um, you know, half hit it. Uh, you know, make sure that you're hitting that note. So if your target is this note, just practice. Uh, you know, you know, get into to that, uh, that that thing where it's ingrained, and you just hit those notes. And it, it takes time, and it takes practice, and it takes training your ears. Um, but uh, once you get it done, you'll never forget it. Um, but again, focus. Don't. A lot of people try to try to push with their their fingers, and that's not the way to do it. You gotta you gotta use use your 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 friction here and your leverage, um, because that's the way, that's the only way you're going to be able to continuously do it and, and, and play it a lot. So um, you know, focus that. You know that is your fulcrum, and uh, and and twisting that that hand up more than pushing your finger. You know, keeping that finger like. You know, in a, in a semi flex state, but but more that uh, that 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 rocking motion. All right, so that was a cool. One. So sometimes I don't even know what I'm playing. I just have to look at it and watch. So what I did here is um, I use my my middle finger um, up here on the third uh, third string, seventh fret. So I did that arpeggiation up and. Uh, snap it so um yeah it was a pretty cool one i wasn't thinking about playing that when it just came out and that's what happens when you uh you know when you start improvising and 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 get this uh you know ingrained into you is you know you, you really become more of a spectator when you're playing and um you know it's it's a pretty cool thing because you just let it go and you come up with little licks like that and you didn't even didn't even think about it. Uh, and then when you play it back, you say, wow, that was pretty cool. And 
you know, you try to remember it and try to do it next time. But, uh, you know, when you do start to think about it, you, you know, I, I can notice in, in, in my playing here when I'm thinking about something because it, the playing isn't as smooth. So um, so that's a cool one to add into the uh, the memory books there. <laughs> That's just noodling around again here. You know, all in this uh, this five note section here. Um, you know, again, coming up with that arpeggiation, starting on the third fret, um, I mean, third string, ninth fret. And uh, hitting those bends. Um, that's kind of the name of the game. So, um, again, those, those hammer-ons and pull-offs are, are key. So what I was doing there was just uh, coming down, um, you know, uh, on, the, on the fifth fret. Uh, you know, right, uh, right below the uh, the root here on the on the on the fourth string, and using that that right hand and being able to control the dynamics. Um, you know, just you know, and that's that's kind of the key. You know, I get a lot of questions of you know how do I change up the licks. Uh, you know, I know a few licks, and you know, but I feel like I'm playing the same thing over and over again. And sometimes it's just uh, you know instead of playing. You know, just change the dynamics and, and the timing. Uh, so you end up playing the same thing, but playing it a lot of different ways. Um, so the more you can change it up, uh, you know, and again, if you're kind of in this state of, you know, um, you know, an observant mind where you're not really thinking about what you're playing, you're just kind of observing it uh, and, and you kind of approach it playfully, you know, that stuff kind of starts to come easy. But, um, you know, for, for the beginning, you, you just got to learn the licks and learn uh Learn, learn, you know, the, the patterns and, and get that muscle memory down. So, um, again, you know, playing around with this arpeggiation. But one thing I did throw in here was a... Um, this, it, it's, it's a variation of the... Um, it's going to be that uh, four seventh chord, but um, all I'm doing is hitting these top uh, two notes. Um, so, you know, coming up here on the third fret, well, not really the third fret, I guess this is the, um, you know, the third finger up here uh, above the, the root, um, and then, you know, coming down on the second, you know, which is that blue note, and doing a double bend. Um, so that's, that's a nice little... Um, you, you'll hear that a lot in my playing. So, you know, that's just playing around um, Yeah, that's all playing around in this little box up here. So, uh, uh, what I'm doing here is just bending up. Again, you know, focusing on that, on, on hitting that bend, um, you know, with that, 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 that uh, you know, rocking motion. Um, and, uh, and sticking those notes on the beat. So that's kind of right there, it was a little Albert King type thing. So what you're doing is you're, you're hitting those full bends uh, on, on the, uh, the, the 10th fret here but then you come up on that first string with your with your first finger um, and uh, this was a tough one to get um, you don't always hit it the right way and you know when you're playing this way it's, it's a tough one to get but what I'm doing is again you know pushing up you know more with uh, with the bottom of my hand and with almost putting my elbow into it and uh, you know really 
rocking up and, and, and pushing that. Um, when you hear Albert King do that, the, you know, he was able to do it real easy because he was playing it upside down and uh, he was pulling down on the string. So, um, you know, you're not always going to sound like Albert King when you do it because you're not playing the exact same way. Um, but this is, you know, when you're, when you're learning how to play this stuff, I know a lot of times you want to learn how to play um, and you want to sound like the, the guys that you listen to and the guys that you like. But, you know, at some point you, you, you start to develop your own tone and your own style. And it gets to the point where, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're at this point when you listen to somebody play, um, you may not, you know, know for sure. But, you know, I can sit there and say, wow, well, I think that's Eric Clapton playing or I think that was uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan or, or that was, Eric, you, know, um, you know, Albert King or, or whatever. So, you know, there's some, a lot of distinctions in, in their playing. And that's, so that's how you're making it authentic and making it you. Um, so you're not going to sound exactly like uh, Albert King or Stevie Ray or Eric Clapton. Uh, but, you know, you want to start sounding like yourself. And, you know, for the most part, I think I sound a lot like myself. Um, you know, there's elements that I hear, and, I've, and, you know, I hear some Clapton in my playing. I hear, you know, certainly some Albert King and Freddie King and some BB King. But, you know, I think it's all my unique take on it. So, again, you know, this... So just you know, hitting those slides and, uh, and playing those kinds of notes there, and just changing it up with some dynamics and, uh, and different patterns. So um, you know. So, you know, you start to, you know, I, I can sit here and pick them apart, but you start to see that, you know, a lot of these things are the same, uh, the same relative patterns, just played a little bit differently and uh, with different feels, different dynamics. Um, you know, a, a lot of the double stops, a lot of the bends uh, just kind of keeps uh, building on itself. But, you know, this is hopefully, you know, by, by seeing some of this and me slowing it down and, and breaking it, you can see how, how these, this pattern, you know, really um, is, is a pattern of efficiency. Um, it's it's easy to play these notes once you get that 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 muscle memory down. So again, you know, probably wasn't trying to show you every single lick in the book, but give you an idea of how this fretboard pattern, um, you know, plays into a lot of these licks. Um, and uh, you know, really, the more you play this this stuff, and the more that you play around in it, the more that this will actually become ingrained. So it's one of these things like. You know, you, you don't have to just sit there and practice the, the straight patterns. Um, start taking some of these licks that I, that I played here and, and make them your own. Start playing a little bit of the, um, you know, the ar arpeggiations and the, the, the hammer-ons and the pull-offs and, and the slides and things like that. And, uh, you know, the more you do that, the more this pattern will become ingrained into your uh, into your muscle memory. So I hope this was useful. Um, you know, I know I probably ad-libbed a lot of this and was, was rambling a little bit. But, um, again, I, I just wanted to share some knowledge and, uh, you know, help you in your journey as you learn to play the blues. So uh, keep the good comments coming. Uh, let me know what else I can help with and uh, keep jamming.